today I want to talk about the propeller experiment. And I have a monograph on my website entitled Chess Propellers, How They Work. And they're based in part upon uh, my grandfather's uh, aviation career, but they're based, but also we get into the theory behind the propeller experiment. And so I wanted to leave that to give you the details of them on how propellers basically work and how to basically analyze them. But what I'm going to try to kind of cut to the chase in this presentation and work towards the experiment that we actually are planning on doing, uh, which we'll talk, which I'll show later in this video. But first, let's give a brief overview of the momentum theory. And there's a diagram in the propeller uh, experiment. It looks like like this, where it comes out. And then it goes in, and that's kind of exaggerated. But we have point one, point two goes into the propeller, point three goes out, and point four leaves the control wire. And we have a velocity here, we have a velocity here, and a velocity here. And basically what we're going to do is we kind of consider the propeller, instead of going to all the complexities, behind the, um, the blades and the way in which it is, acts as a screw through the air, we consider it just as a disc, because this is an axisymmetric solid around the um, propeller. And so this is, because obviously, the tips of the propeller give you a circular uh, trace, and so this is axisymmetric. So in any event, we're going to just consider this to be a disc. And this disc does something to the air. And what we do in, the, in most propeller theory and the, that you see in textbooks, and I actually um, replicate that in my monograph, concerns V1 and V4. And the effect that the propeller has on the fact that the velocity increases from here to here and the fact that this velocity is the average of the two. But we're going to do something a little different here. And the, something a little different is we are going to kind of skip over the rest of the control volume and just look at a two or three. Basically, what we want to know to do is to consider the momentum theory as in this control volume, because what we're going to do is we're going to measure that using a pitot-static tube behind here, and it'll, we can start from here and go through in different positions, and I'm going to go to that in just a minute as well. We're going to do all this. So, if you recall from solid mechanics, um, momentum, F delta T, and F can vary with time and whatnot, so let's just, you know, say F T times is equal to mass times um, velocity. In fluid mechanics, we act, it actually is stated just slightly differently. Actually, M dot, which is V, or I can say this is that the change of mass to it was mass flow rate times the velocity. Now that's their basic theory behind that. The um, the mdt is equal to rho times q, or the volumetric flow through there. Um, basically, I take density times the volume, and then I can rho times area times the velocity times the velocity, or rho, area of velocity squared. And that is basically the momentum, that's how momentum is applied across this little control box. Now, if I turn around and I measure the velocity on the back side of this as close as I can get to it, I have to be careful, because if I get too close, 
then I'm going to run into problems with turbulence and all this other stuff. So I have to kind of take, take a little balance here. And with that, and so I take these velocities, I get an average velocity. Um, and I can say that this is the average velocity, and I can compute this, and I can compare it. If I've instrumented this thing, which is equal to thrust, I can compare it to instrumented thrust, and I can get a result. That's the bottom line behind this experiment. Now, the, the, the tricky part is getting to this. And basically the problem is this. If I, I'm going to look at, I'm looking at this one, look at this one. If I look at this propeller here as a, a disc and it's roaring fast enough so that the blades are going around and around and around, and I were to take, let's say, even like with one, at least in the, let's see, one, across here, if I was to take evenly spaced and I were to add it up, I would be wrong. Why would I be wrong? Because this, each of these points represents a different, it covers a, we're going to say it covers a different area. The points on the outside of the circle actually are more meaningful to a larger part of this disk than the ones on the inside. So for example, the center one cover, you take two halves this way, and then this, and then this, and then this. And each one of these points, this point represents the average velocity in this, and that velocity can be converted to a thrust by applying this equation, and times v squared for that, that area, rho, and I get F for the thrust for that area. And I do the same thing again, only this time I've got two of them. So I simply average those, those two, and I consider it for this area times that velocity squared times the rho again. Rho, we can pretty much, you know, pretty much assume that rho is close to the ambient rho we have. And that's, we do that in the example I give in jets, in jets propellers. And I do the same thing for this, and this, and this. And you'll see, of course, is that these areas on the outside are larger than those on the inside. An alternate way of doing this would be to basically redistribute this where you have that all these are the same area. And basically what you do that is you make these thinner on the outside and bigger on the inside. And you can have, and they do that with piping. Now, that is, is a good idea, but it runs in, it's a little harder for someone to, you know, unless you mark the, the traverse out properly, you're going to have problems with that. So we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it where each of the, we're going to weight basically these, and, and we add, in other words, this will automatically weight the effect of, say, this circle, this ring, and this ring, and this ring, and this ring, and this circle in the middle. And we're going to add all those up, and we're going to get a thrust, which by stack equilibrium should be close to what it is here. And so, and we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll get all that, and we should be able to get that live happily ever after with this. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're going to be doing with this experiment. And you should be, and I'm going to go to the lab now, and I'm going to show you how this, is, this actually works, and actually works in, in the lab itself. By doing this, we can verify the momentum theory, which is, which, and, I, and I state this very clearly, it's, it's fairly crude. It works, and it's worked for a long time, because fruit came up with it in the 19th century, not with aircraft, but with ships. And so, with that in mind, we're going to see how this actually plays out 
in data. So let's go to the lab and see how this works. This is our propeller experiment. This we're actually in the lab, and this is the apparatus we're going to use. Let me give you a brief rundown of how this works and how we're going to use it. Over here, we have the computer which controls the apparatus, which is hooked up to it with a USB, and below it is the power supply. And the power supply furnishes the power to the system. Here in the middle, we have the actual test apparatus itself. It, we're going to, when we run it, we're going to run it with this door open. However, this cage is designed for lab safety. It's designed for to make sure that no one gets hurt when they're running this experiment. But we'll leave that door open just to make it easier for you to see on the video what's going on. And the test stand is inside and it's hooked up to both the computer, which controls it, and the power supply, which furnishes power. And over here on the, over here we have the traverse with the pedostatic tube right there, which basically, as we move it back and forth, I'm gonna give you a little bit better view of that in just a second, we're going to be able to measure the velocity across the front of this propeller. Here we can get a little bit better view of the, the test stand, the propeller, which is behind the cage. But the main reason why I want you to look at this is to look at the traverse. The traverse the, basically moves the pedostatic tube back and forth across the front of the propeller. And the actual purpose behind that and how you break down the data from it is given in my a description of the theory, chest propellers, how do they work? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to start here at 12 centimeters from the center because right here we, we set this thing up so that this pitot tube is, in this, is right along the axis with the center of the propeller. And we have 12, and we're going to go in 2 centimeter increments, 12, 10, 8, 6, four, two, and then zero. And then we start with minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight, minus 10, and then minus 12. Now some of you are saying, well, shouldn't the minuses and the plus be backwards? Well, basically it doesn't make any difference which way, as long as we're consistent with the way we apply it. And we're gonna move this traverse across and we're going to take velocities after we start the apparatus. Let's go ahead and get started with the test. You will note that we have uh, uh, a little airspeed that it's recording. You know, there's ambient conditions in the room that are contributing to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the apparatus. Uh, the traverse is set at 12 centimeters from center. I, mean, I so showed you what that was earlier. So Let's go ahead and get, and we're going to move in in two centimeter increments across, just like I showed you. Now my objective is to get up to 5,000 RPM. Uh, get up. Kind of easing it up, so we want it to overshoot. And of course, as the propeller speeds up, you get a little more airspeed, which you would expect. We'll just leave it there. That's close enough. We are goal is 5,000. This shows the apparatus running. We're at full speed right at the moment. On the left, you can see the propeller, the test stand, the test fan is fully instrumented to record the thrust that the apparatus is giving, the torque, the power, and all that. On the right, you see the pedostatic tube coming out of the traverse. And the pedostatic tube will record the velocity. As I mentioned in the theory in chest propellers, how they work, our goal is to get 
as close as we can to the propeller to take the data without necessarily getting into a lot of the immediate turbulence and whatnot that surrounds the propeller. In other words, we're trying to have the best of both worlds. And we're going to see in this data collection how that comes out, but you can see how this runs. And then this time I've run it with the cage open so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. So with that, let's go ahead and run this test uh, using the traverse from 12 centimeters over to minus 12 and take a series of velocities. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually, instead of recording this and then watching this, which is not very exciting and not very informative, we're going to actually re record the screen output of the software which is used to um, record both what's going on with the test stand and what we're getting out of the pedostatic tube in the traverse. So let's go ahead and get that started. We are at um, 12 centimeters from the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the air, you know, the airspeed settle down a little bit. And there's a lot of, you know, noise and variation in the airspeed. That's to be expected. Digital devices are very sensitive to picking that up. One thing that analog devices are not quite as sensitive because most of them have some kind of inertia in them that um, cancels out problems like that. But any event, with that in mind, we are at 12. And let's move the traverse over to 10 centimeters from center. Now we'll go to eight centimeters from center. You'll note that there is an option in this in the controlling program to record it to a CSV file. You can do that. And you might be able to uh, apply some uh, statistical analysis, RMS damping and whatnot to the data and maybe see if you can um, get a little bit better idea of the averages, average airspeed, and get some of the noise out of it. However, in this case, I want everything to be visible from the video. And by the way, all of the configuration of the apparatus is the way that I describe it in chest propellers, how do they work. Now let's go down to six centimeters from the center.
Now let's go to four centimeters. One good thing is that as the air, we get closer to the center and the airspeed increases, we get a little bit tighter result. Now let's go down to two centimeters from the center. Notice that now we're down getting close to the center, the airspeed is dropping a little bit. Uh, Fritz theory predicts that we should have a constant velocity in the um, stream of velocity from a propeller. But of course, we've said before that Fritz theory is a little crude and it's not perfect. It'll give us good results, but it's not you know, ideal. And then we have zero, at least zero centimeters. It's not ideal from the standpoint of being able to predict everything that's going on. To predict everything that's going on, you would probably need a CFD model of this to operate it. Now we are go to negative two centimeters. We're, we've crossed over the center and we're on the other side. Now we're going to minus four centimeters. Now let's go to minus six centimeters.
will go to minus eight centimeters. Minus 10 centimeters. And last but not least, minus 12 centimeters. And with that, let's go ahead and stop the machine. And at this point, you have the data you need, the same type of data that went into the sample problem and chest propellers, how they work. And you can actually make a comparison of the uh, average of the of the thrust of this with the uh, what the, the sensors record on the motor itself and or on the apparatus actually it has a way the apparatus has a method of estimating the thrust that the device is given so with that we'll stop the experiment So now we've completed our data collection. You can use the same parameters, propeller size, etc., that you have in chest propellers, how they work. It's the same apparatus we collected, and the photos of it are also at that. So with that, it's been a an, an, it's an interesting problem, propellers with momentum theory, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So thanks for watching and God bless.